Our reading tonight is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 10 to 25. Verse 10. So it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land of which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you large and beautiful cities, which you did not build, houses full of all good things, which you did not fill, hewing out wells, which you did not dig, vineyards and olive trees, which you did not plant. When you have eaten and are full, then beware, lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You shall fear the Lord your God and serve him and shall take oaths in his name. You shall not go after other gods, the gods of the peoples who are all around you. For the Lord your God is a jealous God among you. Lest the anger of the Lord your God be aroused against you and destroy you from the face of the earth. You shall not tempt the Lord your God as you tempted him in Massa. You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God, his testimonies, and his statutes which he has commanded you. And you shall do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with you, and that you may go in and possess the good land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to cast out all your enemies from before you, as the Lord has spoken. When your son asks you in time to come, saying, what is the meaning of the testimonies, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord our God has commanded you? Then you shall say to your son, We were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and the Lord showed signs and wonders before our eyes, great and severe, against Egypt, Pharaoh, and all his household. Then he brought us out from there, that he might bring us in to give us the land of which he swore to our fathers. Then he brought us out from there, that he might bring us in to give us the land of which he swore to our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to observe all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. Then it will be righteousness for us if we are careful to observe all these commandments before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you uh, for what you have prepared for us. Uh, we pray that you be with the speaker tonight and you be with those who will listen near or far, O oh Lord, be with them. We pray for your wisdom that we understand your word and uh, use it in our lives. We thank you for uh, providing. We pray uh, we live all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Hey, we're back to our studies again after the Zoom and the, the lockdown and we the first time back to our uh, study here. Uh, we are thinking uh, tonight of this a uh, refreshing view and uh, we appreciate the reading there by Rita and the prayer by Sam. Why eagles wings? That's a, an interesting question you know and of course there we have the picture there of an eagle and uh, why eagle's wings? Well there's a lesson maybe from the eagle. Uh, we see there the, uh, the eagle uh, has the little one on its uh, back. You can hardly maybe uh, notice it there very well. And maybe I doubt a bit. It's better on the, on the uh, computer. But uh, there it is, you see, that is the, the, what the eagle would do. And the eagle, of course, uh, teaches the young one to fly. And eventually, 
uh, once it gets it up on its back like that and carries it along, it's to eventually, uh, you know, to let it go and to fly on its own. Once it learns that he's got to use its wings and all that. So it's uh, great lessons, you know. Maybe lessons for us uh, in the Christian life as well. Why eagle's wings? In Deuteronomy 32, 11 and 12, as an eagle stirs up its nest, hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up, carrying them on its uh, wings, so the Lord alone led him, and there was no foreign god with him. They calculate this as 50 days since leaving Egypt, verse 1, to the giving of the law. Was there some allusion? Uh, the feasts of the Passover and Pentecost, also with the sending of the Holy Spirit. Well, you do remember that uh, uh, Moses, he was on the mountain of God and he met uh, a special encounter with God there. And uh, they're back now to the mountain of God, to Mount uh, Sinai. So we uh, continue with this topic. And uh, verse 19, verse 4, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Well, that's the thought, you see. Uh, they see there what the eagle does and what God has done for them and how he's carried them all that way, right through the Red Sea and on ahead, bringing them out and bringing them in, eventually bringing them into the promised land. So we think of this refreshing view, the rescue. In Exodus 3, 9, Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me. And I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. And so God is a God who hears. He's a hearing God and he's a seeing God and a caring God. So he's all seeing, um, omniscient and uh, hearing. He's, he's uh, able to see, he's uh, able to hear all that he said and uh, he's not deaf. And of course, he is caring for them as well. He's thinking about them, you know. The shock. It was a bit of a shock for Moses, you know, right now. And in Exodus 3.10, Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Well, there it is. It was a bit of a shock. So we're just doing a review of the a kind of, of all this that we have done already uh, as we're coming on. And so Moses is a happy shepherd and a family man. He's now got a wife and a family there uh, on, uh, near Mount Horeb, and, uh, which is the mountain of God. And uh, uh, there he is happy, you know, contented about life and settled down, you know. But he's here commissioned now uh, to come now, therefore, and I will send you. So he's commissioned to, to a, a, a change of work, a different kind of shepherd, the redemption then. Well, it was a great miracle, you know, the redemption, the picture of God's redeeming love and power, uh, you know, later. So he uh, defeated all the gods of the Egyptians. He uh, arranged all those uh, ten plagues, and that was all against all the Egyptian gods, uh, the main ones, I suppose, because they had an awful lot. In verse 22, Then you shall say to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn. So I say to you, Let my son go, that you may serve me. But if you sorry, that he may serve you me. But if you refuse to let him go, indeed, I will kill your son, your firstborn. Well, that was some warning for Pharaoh. 
if he would take it in. But sure, he laughed at it. Sure, he was the proud, he was the number one man, uh, the world leader, uh, great power and all that, you know, then I thought, ha, ah, ridiculous. What would he, what would, how would he do that, sure? He, he, it, we, we are worshiping, we're following the real God, these gods that we have uh, are so powerful and they give us different things or, well, the thought, the thought he did, they did, you know. So, well, it's a great picture, you see, as we think about it, of redemption in chapter 12. What was it there, you see, in Exodus chapter 12? The lamb, of course, was the perfect uh, one, the perfect lamb. Uh, and it was uh, checked out for 14 days. It wasn't just, to say, we have a lamb. But there he was looked at and checked out that it was, this lamb was going to be perfect. You know, uh, verse 5. The blood of the lamb had to be then applied, of course, the, uh, verse 7, on the, the lintel and on the two side posts of the door. And that was uh, uh, shown there, the destroying angel that would pass over. It's called the Passover. And so the angel of death would pass over uh, that house but not over the houses where the blood was not applied. And so we need the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ applied to our hearts and our lives that we too can uh, know, his, know his protection uh, against the enemy uh, and be with him then eventually forever. The picture of the Lamb of God. You know, really showing there in full picture the Lamb of God. It was... Uh, you know, all of that was a type of Jesus, and the Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled it perfectly. Great deliverance wasn't it for the believer? For those who believed, for those who didn't believe, the houses in Egypt that morning, that day, that night, middle of the night, were very sad. And there was, uh, it wasn't, uh, there was uh, someone dead, the firstborn, and the firstborn of the animals as well. You know, because God had a special plan there, showing there uh, a purpose in all that, you see, because the firstborn was so important. Right. And it's terrible sadness in Egypt. Well, redeemed and rescued from the hand of Pharaoh, and it's right through the Red Sea. The Red Sea opened up, God blew with his wind, and the sea opened up, the Israelites went through on dry land, and then uh, Pharaoh, he, he took a notion of uh, getting his uh, men, his great army, all his army there together, and, and to follow them, and bring them back. So, there is the evidence that there is an awful lot, there was a mighty, uh, a mighty lot, he, he took his, his big army, you see, there, uh, and they, I think, was it, uh, what was it, I think, was it 300 chariots? I uh, can't remember, maybe not quite that, but anyway, quite a number of chariots, you see, and they have uh, the skeletons of the horses and the chariots and the, the armor and all that is there in the bottom of the Red Sea. So, and... Uh, Moses' great song of praise to God, you know, in chapter 15. A wonderful praise, and, and, and even Miriam and the women, they all went out and they praised, uh, you know, about the horse and his rider is in the sea, and uh, but drowned in the sea. And uh, what great praise and glory to God for what he had done. So then they had to come to their food and their refreshments. Uh, what was that? Their supplies. Of course, they had the. Remember, they had the. Uh, they uh, uh, they had to have the unleavened bread, and that was in in dough. And they were able, of course, at times to stop and cook that. And uh, uh, and so they they had that, you see, uh, and uh, to keep them going for a time. But of course, that got used up. All the supplies they had got used up, you know, as well. And. Uh, what were they going to do? Oh, 
pressure would come on Moses then to supply food for these. What was there? 600,000 men plus children. And it doesn't mention the wives. So these, these, these men, they would have had uh, wives as well, you know. Exodus 12, 37. And then one year later, what happened? Numbers 1, 45 and 46. So all who were numbered of the children of Israel by their father's houses, from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war in Israel, all who were numbered were 603,550. So if you're a good mathematician, you could count uh, the extra that had come uh, the 19 year olds now had become what? 20 and they were in, in, included in, in that lot right so the common refrain that went on at that time Exodus 14 11 then they said to Moses because there was no graves in Egypt have you taken us away to die in the wilderness why have you so dealt with us to bring us out of Egypt well, there was, they had the, uh, no water at, at uh, where was that, at Elam, and, and they had to, uh, uh, the water was bitter, I think, so they had to uh, do something about that, find a miracle, and uh, put something in the water, a stick or something, and it, uh, it got better. And then there was the manna, of course, you see, and amazing how there was this uh, mist, and, and then the formed on the ground something like hoar frost and it was wonderful bread to eat you know uh, it reminds us when we went to Ecuador and we had these great uh, rolls morning rolls and, and they were so lovely they were sweet <laughs> we soon it wasn't long after one go of them I think we got tired of them you know to the very sweet and this manna was a special stuff too you know uh, and then of course they had no meat and they cried out about that as well, you see, and they, he, he sent them quails. Amazing, wasn't it? Through that whole uh, wilderness, he provided for them. And then, of course, the water. More water they needed as they went on. And he, he went, he struck the rock, you see it. Told to strike the rock at Horeb. And, uh, and that, of course, uh, uh, that's what happened. But later on, then again, he, he was told, you know, to speak to the rock. But poor Moses lost his, his, his patience with them. And uh, he, he got angry. And he said, hear ye rebels. Will I bring water out of the rock from you? And he struck the rock. And because of that, God... Uh, didn't allow him to enter the land because he disobeyed the instructions. He was to speak to the rock, not uh, not to uh, uh, strike the rock. And some people make uh, quite an issue of that, that Jesus, of course, was struck once. Well, uh, or he was pierced once. And, uh, but, uh, of course, uh, there it is, you see. And uh, he wasn't... Uh, a second time and uh, uh, Moses then you see he uh, it was sad for him you see because he had to die in the wilderness with those a generation so it's a serious a serious preparation wasn't it and we come to the conclusion here you know we're not making it a big long story for our first go and uh, uh, hey, they are relating the words of the covenant. It's now coming to giving the Ten Commandments, uh, and I decided tonight not to go straight into them, you know. Uh, and uh, so uh, they're relating the words of the covenant. God is making this covenant, we call it the Old Covenant, the Old Testament is part of it, and uh, the covenant, the law of God, you know, and all the rules and regulations there were to, uh, for them. And so, verse 2, I am the Lord your God. That was wonderful for them, wasn't it? Reminding them again, you know, 
who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So it's really showing them, you see. And, and it was amazing that sometimes they get so fed up and they want to go back to there again. Back to the old life. That's terrible. And some people maybe do look back and that's sad. And maybe even some people go back and that is worse. And so there it is, a, a, a refreshing view of the whole thing there, up so far. And so let's pray. Our gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings to us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the opportunity to come again. And we pray that next time some, maybe some more will be able to come, that we'll make it maybe more known to as well. But uh, we do pray, Lord, you lead and guide by your Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, too, for those who when um, we get this online, we'll be able to uh, see it. And we pray, Lord, your blessing. So we ask, O oh Lord, your leading and guiding now. And be with each one of us, our friends and loved ones. And we do pray, Lord, for those who, like Wendy, has to work uh, in the hospital, Lord. And others under these terrible conditions, Lord, they have to do it in the old system and take the notes down no records for anybody, Lord. So we pray your blessing now. We ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake and glory. Amen.